Hey scientists! Today, let's talk about how living organisms live, survive, and interact with different factors in their ecosystem. Ecosystems are made up of all of the living and non-living things in a specific area. Let's learn some higher level words to describe these things. Biotic. These are all of the living organisms in an ecosystem. Things like bacteria, plants, and animals. Since these are all alive, they can also die or be dead. Abiotic means all of the other stuff that isn't, wasn't, and won't be alive. Things like rocks, dirt, light, warmth, and chemicals like oxygen, water, nitrogen, or carbon dioxide. Since these things haven't ever been alive, we don't call them dead. They can't die. We simply say that they are non-living. Most of the time, it is really easy to tell whether something is alive or not. But sometimes it's more difficult, so we have come up with some specific characteristics to help us recognize if something is living or non-living. All living things are made up of cells. They can be single cells or big multicellular organisms like you, most animals, and most plants that you think of every day. Living organisms also use energy and expel waste. This can be in a multitude of ways, like eating or breathing. But keep in mind, not all organisms breathe oxygen like us. Plants and a lot of types of bacteria breathe in carbon dioxide. Another characteristic shared by all living organisms is that they grow and develop or change. Even single-cell amoebas grow and grow until they reproduce by dividing. Which leads us to our next characteristic. All living organisms reproduce and pass on their traits to the next generation. There are a lot of different types of reproduction, but the goal is the same across the board, to pass on the genes to the next group of offspring. The last characteristic is that all living organisms respond to their ecosystem. Most of the time in an ecosystem, we just focus on the living things there because that's generally what's moving, growing, changing, responding, and eating. But a lot of times, the non-living factors can play a huge role in shaping and affecting the future of the living factors. Things like sunlight can affect plants in huge ways, but these non-living factors can also affect animals. Let's take a look at our pet lizard. He lives in a terrarium. Let's pick out all of the non-living factors in his ecosystem. He has a heat lamp. That's not alive. He has sand, rocks, water, and his cave. Now, let's look for all of our living things. We obviously have our lizard, but we also have all the crickets that he eats and the branch he crawls on. I know the branch is tricky, but it came from a tree, and while it's dead now, that means it was living, and is thus a living factor. Now, let's take a look at a larger ecosystem. Let's look at a pond. This environment has a lot of non-living factors like pond water, mud, sunlight, rocks, all of the chemicals in different parts of air, like oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and these things greatly affect the living organisms here. These water lilies have evolved and changed to have thick floating leaves to move on top of the water to get more sunlight. But living organisms also interact with each other, like when insects use the lily pads to lay their eggs close enough to the water. Living factors and non-living factors interact and change how all of the living organisms in an ecosystem live and survive. Now, let's check out a question. 